this is not me. But it looks a lot like I used to when I was playing sousaphone in junior high school and high school. I loved it. The band director looked at me and said, tall, braces, sousaphone. <laughs> I said, okay. I really liked trumpet, but no. Nope. So um, there's not a lot of call for tuba solos. So we played in ensembles. And I played in every single musical group I could find. Jazz ensemble, wind ensemble, marching band, or I don't care. Because the feeling it gave me was transformational. The feeling it gave me was I can play my own sound and play with others that are creating their own sounds and then create something that none of us could have done by ourselves and to remember that there is an audience that we are playing for as a purpose. This was energizing. I needed more of this. Kept looking for ways to connect and said, how do I start building this into my life? And I did not become a musician, but I worked and brought that same philosophy to my business and partnerships that we set up. We set up a private equity operation that was the first partnership ever in corporate forum. We set up nonprofits that were focusing on part bringing partners together in collaboration. And it's part of my faith practice, looking at developing sanghas and bringing others together as well. Co wrote a book with Jennifer McRae called The Generosity Network because working together with others is a transformational experience, not a solitary one. We created ideas, I was chairman of Monticello, we created ideas of Jeffersonian dinners bringing people together at a whole table and having a whole table conversation, not just one on one, stimulates more ideas and activities. So did that in my business life. We looked for partners, looked for CEOs that we could back and scale, take their innovations to scale, and that worked. We did Office Depot, we did JetBlue, we did Aramark, we did a whole bunch. We said, oh, this is a good formula finding people who are good partners and having them develop teams of partners. So we did that for quite a while and 25 years into it. I said, I'd like to have impact more than just on organizations, but the larger systems. So I was lucky enough to be able to go to Harvard and be an executive residence at the business school, the Kennedy School, and says, let's bring this to social enterprise. Let's start bringing the same kind of partnering philosophy. Um, I chair a group called New Profit, and we backed organizations like Teach for America and Wendy Kopp. Year up, Gerald Chetavian. Rebecca Oni at Health Leads. Great social entrepreneurs. Really doing good stuff. And so we started supporting them and looking for them and saying, ah, they'll have scaling strategies. We'll take those innovations and build them up. And we started creating what some call a worship of heroes. Hero entrepreneurship. And so Skoll gave awards. Forbes magazine put people on covers. And something was still off because the playgrounds of America were still unrepaired. The school systems still weren't working. Poverty was still on the streets and the environment still had issues. So all of these great social entrepreneurs with these great ideas, turns out we as old venture capitalists were wrong because we kept telling them that they needed to figure out a scaling strategy. Go get bigger. They're really good at innovation. Let's let them do that. Maybe that's a different kind of idea. So we started to look at saying, what does that mean? If they just did innovation, then who takes the innovation and embeds it into the larger system? We started to find models for that. And I worked over the last nine years with the UN as well, a guy named Ray Chambers, uh, on malaria. And we brought as a large collaboration deaths from malaria down from a million to a year to below 300,000 a year. I worked on community health worker strategies with many other people and we have for the last five years, and we've done really good work. But it's not as I have the idea to how to do this. It's we need a, to, to direct attention at a problem and figure out all the different innovations that can go um, after that idea. So we studied it at the Kennedy School. Uh, last June, we brought 30 organizations together that were systems change organizations, focusing on 
things. I'll give you an idea of one we're working on right now, which is bringing back music to all kids across America. Yeah. Right? So being able to say, how do we start thinking about that instead of backing one organization or two or three? And we've now set up the Grammys Music Education Coalition. I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. We also started seeing that there is this person, there is this group of people who are around each of these system change, successful system change operations. We're calling them system entrepreneurs. Different from a social entrepreneur, who has to have an organization, I gotta set a board up, I get a long lived organization, I gotta direct sir. There's a lot of things you're gonna be doing. But the system entrepreneur says, I just want to achieve the goal. I want to end deaths from malaria. I want to bring all kids in America music. And figuring out that goal requires different skills. It requires them to do different things. So so we started coming up with framework. They have to do a couple of different things. Like, what is the problem? How many people jump to the answer before they say, one, do I even know the problem? But two, does everybody I'm trying to work with know the, agree on the problem? Deaths from malaria took us about a year and a half to get agreement that that was the problem and that was the goal. Seems easy. Then you have to figure out a systems map. Nobody does this much, but more are. Who's relevant to the problem? Before you get to the answer, figure out who's relevant. Who cares? In the malaria example, who would have guessed that Exxon was going to be one of the biggest supporters of us bringing bed nets to Africa? It turns out that their employees are there, their communities are there, this is important to them. So looking at this map and figuring out how to convene the right people, bringing it around the objective, these are what system entrepreneurs do. And they also look at the levers that you can pull to say, how do I achieve the goals I'm trying to work on? Innovations come from great nonprofits or universities. Gee, I need to work on making sure the innovations are the right ones and they're effective, or that there's a mix. I mean, AIDS has three drugs coming together for antiretrovirals, not one. Who figured that out? Who does that in the social change space? The tools that we can come together with to solve the problem. Communication strategies, policy strategies. I haven't seen many nonprofits that are good at communicating. They're good at doing. So let's put resources into communicating. And then data. So for music, how do we know when the collaboration is working? So we have somebody that we're now have, has built for nine states the ability for you to go online and drill down city by city and say, how many kids are taking music? What schools have music and which don't? We have a bubble map now that says, these schools in New York City do not have music. We've worked over the last several years to bring music back to 75,000 kids in New York City, and they now have it. And now we're going to double that. And now we're going to bring it out to the nation. That data is going to hold us together. But there's an organization that just does data. Who guessed? But you're, that's a really important thing to do. So thinking about the skills of the system entrepreneur, how are they pulling this together? They've got to be creative. You've got to be team players. A skill is not knowing everything. Understanding that they need to ask the questions. Beginner's mind, coming to this zero state where you rebuild with all what you know and what everyone knows to a common solution. So understanding that there are these key skills, how do you teach these? We don't all just walk in as these managed ego beings. And so I've been meditating for 43 years. And I chair the uh, advisory board of the Contemplative Science Center at the University of Virginia. And we're bringing these tools to medicine, to education, to business, and we're going to continue to bring these to the system change space. System entrepreneurs can use the skills of concentration. And it's, mindfulness is not just one practice. I think we all hopefully know. One practice is, con is contemplation around concentration, focusing on one thing. That helps your listening skills. Science is all here. We've all seen it, I hope. But if not, you can look it up. Understanding the neurons are changing. But a different area of the brain is going to change 
when you're working on compassion practice. Compassion practice is really good for team building, understanding what others are thinking and what they're trying to do, a different style of practice. And lastly, open awareness, and this is just three of many, helps you on creativity. Understanding how to open your mind to other possibilities. So it's a nice bridge between system entrepreneurs. Now, who are some system entrepreneurs? I work with two on the community health worker space, Phyllis Hayden and Claire Koreshi. Amazing. Five years. They don't raise money for themselves or us. They help make sure we're bringing community health workers to Africa, the frontline health workers. They're working with presidents of Liberia. They're working with USAID. They're working with Aspen Institute. Whatever it takes to solve the problem. Shruti Sara, a partner at New Profit. She's focusing on reimagining learning, particularly around personalized learning. So Zuckerberg Gates, Zuckerberg Chan and Gates are now supporting her. And she's bringing social emotional learning and working with a group called Castle to do that as well. Ellen Agler, Ellen's going to end most neglected diseases, five of them, in particular that they're focusing on river blindness, elephantitis. We can bring these to near zero. And so she's looking at all of the levers to say, you know, Merck has these drugs that we need to get distributed and they'll give it to us for free. How do we do that? Gee, there's a great nonprofit in the DRC that if they're successful, the rest of the Congo is going to potentially adopt this new system. Gee, we need a communication strategy to figure out how to make people aware of the problems around neglected diseases so they're not neglected. She's having huge success. So guess what? Shruti and Ellen are meditators. We're seeing this. Uh, Nick Rono is the head of the Freedom Fund, 42 million people in slavery. They have three major philanthropists who have now come together, along with multilaterals, working on this issue, working on the issue of, sl of slavery. There's another woman, Tracy Durning, who's doing amazing work, bringing kill rates in animal shelters down across America. The average was around 65% kill when you bring a dog or a cat in. Today, in the cities they're working in, it's near zero. So you can do this. You can use these tools and techniques to change the world and make systems better. Bottom line is, find your ensembles to play with. Find others who can come together and help you achieve the goals you want to achieve to change the system. Use system entrepreneurs. If you're a social entrepreneur, partner with a system entrepreneur. If you are a philanthropist, find a system entrepreneur to partner with. And if you are a system entrepreneur, or today just discovered you are one, <laughs> talk to me. You know, <laughs> let's figure this one out. And lastly, I want, you to give, I want to give you the, uh, a feeling of what it's like, for me at least, to play in collaboration. So do me a favor and hum loudly when I say three. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Thank you for playing. <laughs>